Nature is of prime importance in Alejandro Iñárritu's The Revenant. It's not merely the setting of the epic survival story, but upon closer examination, the natural world can be seen as a pivotal character in the film. It's through Hugh Glass's relationship to the wilderness around him that he's able to embark on and survive his physical, emotional, and spiritual journeys. The natural world is present in every shot of the film, usually comprising more of the frame than the actors within it. Cinematographer Emmanuel Lubezki's use of wide-angle lenses help capture the expansive nature around the characters, allowing the locations to become more than mere scenery, but a part of the storytelling. His use of mostly natural lighting also emphasizes the omnipresence and significance of nature for the men of the Revenant. Whenever we see the men, the high trees in the distance are towering over them from all sides, lurking behind and around them in an almost threatening manner. The wilderness crowds the fur trappers into the center of the frame, engulfing them and at times obstructing them from the camera's view, as if a reminder of nature's dominance, a warning to abide by Mother Nature's rules. The film continually reminds us of this in multiple shots that open with only the bare wilderness, a creek bubbling calmly, a forest of trees standing tall and still, all untouched and placid until the camera slowly pans downwards or upwards to find the men traveling within them. These moments remind us nature came first, and then man. These, along with the extreme wide shots of landscapes in the film, further establish the immense scale and the all-encompassing force and power of nature. The fur trappers and native tribes are only specks within the natural environment, but in order to survive, they must learn to coexist with it. The placement of the camera also characterizes Glass's relation to nature by echoing the evolution of his journey through it. Rarely shooting Glass at eye level, the camera often hovers slightly above or below him in extreme close-ups of his body and face. The angles suggest Glass is constantly seeking something out of his reach, as the extreme close-ups dislocate him from the nature around him. We see this sense of longing when the camera shows his POV as he looks upward through the treetops. But what is he looking for? We finally learn this in a flashback. As Glass looks up through the trees, he remembers his wife's death and envisions her floating above him in the forest. Instead of looking upward to receive a message from God, Glass finds his wife uttering words of wisdom. Here, his love for her becomes the physical manifestation of his faith, as his upward perception of nature comes to symbolize a release from suffering. His goal to survive and exact revenge ultimately evolves into a spiritual pilgrimage. Glass's visions of his wife hovering above him are strong allusions to the work of Andrei Tarkovsky, most notably the levitating woman in the mirror. We can understand the images of levitation in both films as moments that represent the majestic and holy quality each woman holds in the eyes of the main male character. Glass's love for his wife literally exalts her to a position above ground, just as Alexei in the mirror envisions his young mother floating in a dream sequence. In Inuritu's film, Glass's wife becomes the spiritual symbol of absolution, hope, and strength. But many of Glass's visions also represent his internal struggle with cultural identity. Unlike the other white fur trappers, Glass is shown to have a deeper connection with nature, especially with the Pawnee tribe he once lived with. Though in the eyes of Fitzgerald, Glass has betrayed his men by once killing a lieutenant. However, Glass shows that he holds some shame for his past when he fails to stand up for his son Hawk and then angrily reprimands him in front of the other men. It's clear Glass is caught between two lives, the life of his Pawnee family in the past and the one of a fur trapper in the present. This dichotomy is shown in Glass's vision where he finds himself in front of a dilapidated church. The walls of the European church within the natural landscape reflect the duality of Glass's cultural affiliations, the ruins mirroring the pain of his past. Here his identity as a Westerner and his affinity with the Pawnee tribe merge in a dreamlike state filled with longing and grief. This scene strongly recalls the final shot of Tarkovsky's nostalgia, in which Andre, a Russian writer, travels through Italy longing for his home country. Andre completes a journey across an empty pool with a lit candle in the film's famous nine-minute scene, a testament to faith and perseverance that in ways reflects Glass's own journey in The Revenant. Afterwards, Andre suddenly falls to his death, and the last shot of the film finds him sitting in front of his Russian farmhouse. As the camera slowly pulls back, it's revealed Andre and his dacha are confined within the ruins of an old Italian cathedral. Here, Tarkovsky merges that of dreams and memory to show the unification of a man split by two countries. It captures the melancholic longing of nostalgia and the coexisting space of the past and present. 
Andre has reached a sense of spiritual resolution in his inner battle, though only in death. Glass is only just beginning his own. The second Tarkovsky reference in the Revenant's church sequence provides a little more insight. The icon paintings on the church walls and the ringing bell above strongly recall the Russian filmmaker's Andrei Rublev. In the film's most memorable sequence, a young boy, Bariska, attempts to cast the bell for a prince. Though he has no idea how to, Bariska does so on intuition and faith alone, knowing that he'll be killed if he fails. The finished bell finally tolls loudly and triumphant, a powerful moment that stands as a testament to the young boy's faith and an inspiration for the painter Andrei Rublev. Inuri II explores the power of faith in his dream sequence as well. Though Glass embraces his son, the very next moment he's alone in the church, hugging only a tree, the bell ringing above Glass's head as he falls into the mud, similar to the overwhelmed Bariska, is a symbol of his continuing strength, a reminder of the hope that can follow loss. Glass may no longer have Hawk, his last connection to the Pawnee people, but the one thing that does remain is the physical and spiritual presence of nature and how it can help him survive. The dream sequence signifies a shift in Glass's relationship to nature, one that moves away from the Westerner side of his identity. After awaking from the dream, Glass rescues a re-woman from French fur trappers. Then, literally using the resources around him to survive, Glass climbs into the carcass of a dead horse. When he emerges, the camera lingers on tranquil shots of the sun shining through trees around him. It's a shot largely reminiscent of Lubezki's work with Terence Malick, in which nature also has a spiritual element. As he prepares to leave, the camera positions Glass in the background of the shot, with a large branch emerging into the foreground. After laying his hand on the horse, Glass looks around and upwards, as if giving thanks to the wilderness for saving his life. In this moment, he's become more a part of the natural scenery, no longer detached from it as implied by the disembodied close-ups earlier in the film. Once Glass has exacted his revenge, the killing of Fitzgerald begins to symbolize more than simply getting justice for his son. In defeating Fitzgerald, Glass has also defeated the shame and the suffering of the past he's carried with him. Once the re pass by, silently acknowledging that he's not like the other ruthless fur trappers, Glass begins his ascent upwards, literally and metaphorically. He sees a vision of his wife ahead of him on the mountain, and in turning away from him, she grants him the emotional and spiritual absolution he's been seeking. In a final shot that again recalls nostalgia and the mirror, Glass slowly turns his gaze into the camera. No longer looking up at the view of the treetops with him, we finally meet his eyes as he finds peace in the flurry of the storm. Thanks for watching. For more, make sure to subscribe, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and get the latest movie and TV news on ScreenCrush.com.